What if I told you there was a way to save those boring and bland images? Well, today I'm gonna to teach you my do's and don'ts of using crop and how to say goodbye to those bland images and hello to jaw-dropping ones. Let's dive into Crop 101. Hi guys, my name's Hannah. I'm a Michigan-based wedding and couples photographer turned educator here to help you level up your biz. Today I'm gonna share with you guys my do's and don'ts of cropping as well as my favorite techniques to use crop to get really stunning, incredible images. Cropping is one of the easiest and best ways to get those stunning results in the editing process when we maybe didn't shoot an incredibly composed photo in camera. Not only will it give you more visually appealing images, but as photographers, it's a really great way to get hands-on with our images, get more creative, add versatility to that portfolio, and just create work that stands out. So my first do of cropping is to use the rule of thirds. So if you've never heard of the rule of thirds, it is a compositional guideline that essentially breaks the image up into thirds, both vertically as well as horizontally. To create more visually appealing images, avoid placing your subject in that middle or center third every single time. So instead of placing your subjects in the middle third every time, you can either place them in the first third, the third third, the top third, or the bottom third. This just adds more variety to your work and changes up the composition of every shot. This is where crop can be your best friend. A lot of times, even myself, I will shoot an image and the subject is just chilling in the center of the frame. Nothing really too exciting about it, but I can utilize crop to move them into a different third of the image to make it more appealing. You can see in this before picture that my subjects are right in the center or middle third of the image. I then used crop to move them into the first third of the image and you can tell how it becomes more visually appealing. This isn't to say that it's wrong to place your subject in the center or middle third of an image. There's always a time and place for that. This is just to add a little bit more variety into the work in the composition that you're shooting. My next tip for using crop is to don't keep a ton of negative space below your subject. Negative space is a part of the image where basically not a lot is going on, empty space. So a lot of times this is either the sky or the ground. I love sky negative space. I think it's a really great way to just have a clean background and focus in on the subject, but I do avoid keeping a lot of ground negative space. When ground is like 50% of your image, it takes away a lot of the focus from your subjects. For example, in this before shot, you can see that there is a lot of ground in the shot creating negative space below my subjects, but when I crop just a little bit of that negative space out, the image changes completely. The focus has now shifted from the ground to the subjects themselves. You can tell that the overall visual appeal definitely improved when I removed a lot of that negative space from the ground and shifted the focus from the ground to my subjects. My next do for cropping is to get creative with it. I always describe cropping as a blank canvas to photographers. It's a great tool to go in with a picture that's a blank canvas and come out with a completely different result. One of my personal favorite ways to get creative with crop is the tight crop or zooming in. Since I primarily shoot couples personally, I love to look for like the storytelling or like emotional aspect of the image and really zoom or hone in on that element. Going to another example, you can see that in this before image, it's a fine image, it's mediocre, nothing's wrong with it, but to me, it doesn't really have a wow factor to it either. When I look at this image, the emotion is right in the center by their faces. So if I zoom right in on the emotion in the photo, you get this instead. The after shot removes a lot of the distraction and zooms in right on the story or emotion of the image. When getting creative with crop guys, I really wanna encourage you to just go for it. There are so many different ways to get creative with crop. A crop can always be undone, so don't be fearful of just going into whatever you edit on and just getting creative with it, just trying new things out, seeing what your eye is drawn to and seeing what you can focus on in each individual image. The next don't of cropping is don't crop off joints. So when you're using all of the techniques that I just talked about, it's important to be mindful of where you are cropping the image off at. When I say avoid cropping at joints, the joints that I'm talking about are like 
ankles, wrists, knees. These are all places that if you crop right at those joint lines, the image will just start to look really incomplete or a little bit wonky. Going to yet another example, you can see in this before shot, I cropped off right at the ankle. And then you can see in the after how much better the image looks when I added back the subject's feet into the frame. In another example, you can see that I cropped off right at the knees. And in the after, you can see I moved the crop up ever so slightly so that I'm not cutting off right at the joint and the overall appeal of the image looks so much better. These are just the little ways to be mindful of the overall appeal of your image when you're using crop and things to be careful of. Now that I have gone over my favorite ways to use crop as well as my do's and don'ts, I really want to encourage you guys to get into whatever you edit on and just try some of these methods out. Try some of these techniques, get creative with it. I think cropping by far is the best way to make an image stand out that might have just been meh before. You can really transform an image by the way you are cropping it. Using crop in a creative but also correct way is one of the best ways to make your portfolio stand out amongst a ton of photographers who might just be doing the average cropping techniques. So like I said before, don't be fearful of trying things out. You can always undo a crop, get creative with the process. I would love to hear in the comment section below which of these techniques or do's and don'ts you tried out and loved. If you found this video helpful, I would love if you could give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you guys next week for more educational content.